everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ava, and today I'm going to show you how to make a faux metal spiral staircase for your miniature scene. For this project today, I'm going to be using a wooden fan that was sent to me by Kim. Thank you, Kim. I'm definitely not the first person to think of using a wooden fan to make a spiral staircase, but I've never actually tried to do it myself. As opposed to when I made the stained glass windows and I did a bunch of research taking in all the information of how everybody else did it, I did absolutely no research for this one and so there may be a better way to do this out there, but I had something in my mind and I just had to try it my way first. And honestly, I think it worked out really well, but after watching this video, you can be the judge. One last thing before we get started, this is for my Captain's Quarters project, so if you're new here, I will put a link to the playlist up above so you can catch all the episodes relating to this project. So without further ado, let's get started. To begin, I need the circle that I cut out originally from the Captain's floor and the fan. Kim was nice enough to tell me that these fans are from davidsbridal.com and if you go to the site and search for fan, she said they're less than $3 each. So if you're interested in trying this out, you can go there to find one of these fans. To separate each individual wood blade, I needed to cut through a little hard to see plastic string that was going through each one and I did realize eventually that they it was tied around each one so I couldn't just cut the plastic string once I had to cut it each and every time and also the wood was thin enough that I could cut the blades off with scissors I could only cut one at a time but it was really easy to remove the blades from the fan itself once they were all removed, it became very apparent just how thin the wood was and that it would easily snap. So my first job was to try and figure out a way to fortify the stair steps so I didn't feel like they were in danger of breaking any time during my project. The easiest way I found to do this was to just double up each fan blade. Again, I had to go in and remove the little plastic piece that was tied around each one so that they would lay flat once they were glued. Just so you know, on my circle reference here, I have two little X's. One of those X's is off center for a random reason, but um, the center one is the one I'm going off of and I'm trying to figure out the best way or the best place to cut the fan blade so it looks like a complete step. It has this natural break in the design and so I made like a curved arch there and I was able again to just use my scissors to cut the very top of the fan blade off. In order to glue them together I'm using some wood glue, some of my favorite wood glue, and I'm going to use wood glue through this entire tutorial. So um, it's something I highly suggest having for this because it's really helpful. I kind of messily put it on the entire side of the fan and then I made sure to line up the design on the inside and then I used a paper clip to poke through the holes because the glue will kind of fill in the holes if it squeezes out once you put the two sides together and I wanted to make sure that there was still that nice design with the clear holes. Once that was done, I clamped it so that it would all glue together really, really well. The wood, because it is thin, likes to warp, and so if you don't clamp it, your pieces won't stick together very well. Once that's done, I have a double thick layer blade, and it is a lot sturdier. While working on this, anytime I felt like there was a little bit of roughness, I went ahead and smoothed it with some sandpaper, and especially on the sides of the fan blades, they're not cut perfectly, so um, if you glue them together and they're a little bit off, sanding the sides can help a lot. It also rounded out my edges a little bit. I want this to look like metal, so it's all going to need to be very smooth. I put my fan blade back on my circle to kind of check the radius and then I decided where I wanted to cut off the other side of the stair. And this is going to cut through the pattern a little bit whereas the outside edge it cut through a natural break. The inside edge is going to cut through the pattern just a little bit but that's okay. I'm going to mark that on every single stair, but I'm not going to cut through the stair yet because it's going to be very helpful to have a little bit of the extra material to hold on to. 
I'm going to add wood glue to the very side of every single step first. The reason I'm going to do this is so that my sides stick together very well before I cover the entire step in wood glue. The process that I take to create these stairs is not very complicated, however, it does have a lot of dry time. So make sure if you're deciding to do this, you take plenty of time and you just allow yourself to have dry time because if you're trying to do this quickly in a time crunch, you'll probably get frustrated waiting for each new layer of glue to dry. Once I've added to the edges, all around the edges of every single stair step and let that dry, I'm going to slather wood glue on the entire pattern on the front and the back or I mean I guess there's not really a front or back yet but on both sides of the stair. I'm being very careful this time to go along with the pattern that is already carved into the wood because if I slather it on top I'm going to fill a lot of the holes. Now if I do fill some of the holes accidentally that's fine I can just go through and poke them out but this time I'm just taking my time and going through and just trying to stay on top of each individual pattern. I think this also creates a little bit of a bump and a kind of that natural metal look where metal is cast and uh, that's why I like using the wood glue for this process. I'm going to do this for each and every step. This will take forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. But in my opinion, I think the result is definitely worth it. And that may be a little bit dramatic. I just put on a fun movie and sat there and worked on each individual piece and then let them dry overnight. And you can see the difference between the one that has been doubled and wood glued and the one that is left without any treatment at all. So now I got a glass of coffee, a glass, who says a glass of coffee? A cup of coffee, and I'm going to take some time and plan out this staircase. Now, I already know that my blades should be the correct size because I've been checking them with the center point of the circle, but now I'm going to take a little bit of time and rotate it around the circle, try to figure out how many steps I need. Now, I realized doing this on the circle wasn't going to help me figure out how many steps I needed to get from the bottom floor to the top floor. To figure this out, I went to the project itself and measured the distance between the two floors. This tells me how many steps I need to get to the top based on how far apart I want my steps to be. So I started by eyeballing it, trying to figure out what I think looked correct, and then I took a ruler and started measuring those distances. And I can't remember the first measurement I with, went with, it might have been three quarter inches or so, but I know that in the end I ended up going with five eighths of an inch in between each stair. So to figure this out in my head, I drew a line that was the same distance between the floor and the ceiling that my stairs needed to go in between. Then I took the measurement that was supposed to be in between each stair and marked it out so I could see how many stairs I would need. So each pencil mark that I have there is representing the top of each stair tread and this is going to help me know how many I need to reach the top. Now I redid this a couple times trying to figure it out and in the end my personal preference and what worked best for my project was for the steps to be 5 8 inches apart. This gave me 12 steps between the floor and the ceiling to get me to the second floor. Then I rotated the pieces and then I knew that my stairs would make almost a half a circle's turn. To continue on with this project, it was about time that I cut off the little handle I used to hold the steps. And I could do this with scissors this time, although I was a little scared it might break my scissors. So I do suggest if you have another way of cutting through the wood, it's strong enough now that scissors just barely, barely do it. But once I had that cut off, I just sanded it down so that I had a smooth curve on the inside edge of the stairs. And now you can see how the stairs are starting to come together and will start to stack. 
I think one of the great things about this project is that the beautiful, intricate detail work is basically done for you with the fans. So it makes this a really satisfying project to do. Uh, you just have to do the steps to put it all together. I'm going to take each individual stair tread and I'm gluing it onto another piece of wood. The reason I'm doing this is because I am going to have to have a center dowel go through each individual step and I'm a little worried that because it's going to have to go through this patterned part of the wood that the wood itself won't hold on to the dowel very well or it won't be very sturdy. And so I'm doubling up the thickness on the interior part of the stair tread so I have something a little bit more substantial to drill through to accommodate that center dowel. I'm going to let this dry again overnight so that everything is secure in place. And then I'm going to figure out where I want to drill. I'm drilling pretty darn close to the edge of the wood and it made me nervous a couple times. So I'm leaving in some proof that I actually used a power tool. These big machines are not my favorite thing to use. They make me really nervous, but I can't imagine doing this with a handheld Dremel with very much success. So here you can see I've drilled through the top part of the stair tread and also through the supporting piece of wood that I glued on afterwards. I will say at this point I did have some of the fan blade break off because obviously it's really tiny detailed scrolled pieces and so to fix some of it, I didn't try and fix all of it, but if I did feel like a big chunk of the fan blade came off during the drilling process, I just added a little bit of drywall spackle over that area so it just kind of filled in that gap where the fan blade flaked off. I think if I hadn't covered it in wood glue, it would have flaked a lot more. So I feel like the wood glue step was pretty integral in keeping these fan blades together during the drilling process. Now I'm going to take my easy cutter and I'm going to start cutting each piece off. These are going to be individual pieces and so now I don't need them on a stick. That just made it a little bit easier to handle on the drill press and it also allowed me to be able to clamp the pieces down while I drilled through them. But now I can separate them and I used an X-Acto knife once it was off to cut off any extras that were sticking out of the side of the fan blade. I want to make sure and match up that bottom piece as best to the top piece. And then I just sanded it so that it was rounded off and made a nice little finish to our stair tread. And I'm going to do this for each individual step. And again, I ended up with 12 steps. Now I can check my dowel. Of course, before you choose your drill bit to drill through your steps, make sure you know what size your dowel is for the center of your staircase. You don't want your hole in your stair tread to be too loose or too small. That would be pretty frustrating in the process. So now I can add them on and start to see how it is looking. And so far I'm really happy with it and I feel like the stair treads themselves could hold themselves up even though in the end I will add some support. But they do seem pretty strong and pretty sturdy. On the center dowel I went ahead and added some lines that are 5 8 inch apart because I know that my top of my stair tread needs to be 5 8 inch from the other stair tread. So I can add a line on the dowel. And then I also cut out pieces of q-tip that were also 5 8 inches long because these are going to be my supports that go in between each individual tread. To support the supports, I'm going to use the very end of some of these craft sticks because I want it to sit off the back of my stair tread. I don't want the support on my stair tread itself. To do this, I'm going to cut a length of this craft stick about a quarter inch long and I want the rounded side. I just think that looks nice and kind of finishes off the stair really nicely. And so I can get two of these out of each craft stick and then I'll just save the center part of the craft stick for something later on. This will go off the back of the stair and then I can eventually glue the q-tip on top of it creating the support which will hold up the next stair tread which I will show you how that looks. I'm using a little bit of wood glue to attach it to the bottom 
of the back of the stair tread and I'm just going to use a clamp. Now it doesn't matter which way your stairs go, but you kind of have to think through that before you add your support. If they're twisting the opposite way from mine, you're going to want the support on the other side of the stair tread. So now I have my cut Q-tip pieces and this one is again 5 8 inch long because that's the distance between my steps and I'm going to glue it on top of the support piece that I just added to the bottom of the stair tread. To do this I'm just going to dip it in a little bit of wood glue and I'm going to let it glob up a little bit because I do want it to have a really strong connection. And so if some of it globs out underneath the Q-tip piece, that's okay with me because I want it to dry and really hold on to that piece. I'm going to do this for each and every step, although eventually I realize I don't really need to do this for the very top step. And I will show you that as well. Once that piece is completely dry, I'm going to coat the entire thing in wood glue again. Basically everything in this project is coated with wood glue because I want it to have the same texture once I paint it. And I also feel like the wood glue acts as kind of a weld and if I cover everything in the wood glue, once it dries it creates this like protective coat over everything and I feel like it just makes everything really really strong. I'm letting these dry over a sharpie so that the q-tip pieces can point up that way I don't have any weird drips that happen during the drying process but this is how it looks after it's dried and this piece is ready to be added on to our staircase here's how it's going to look all I have to do is glue them on top of each other now I'm starting at the top of the staircase this just seemed to be the easiest way for me to do it. Um, I'm not sure there's a right or a wrong way. I'm going to add some wood glue just underneath the line that I added with my pencil. Then I'm going to scoot my stair tread up to meet that line. This is going to be my very top step. After I feel like the glue there has taken hold and that this one is pretty secure, I can start by adding the second one in the same way. I'm going to add glue just underneath the second pencil line down and then I'm going to also add glue on top of the support piece and then line it up underneath the previous piece so that I have what looks like stairs that are starting to come down where the lower stair support goes to the front of the stair above it. That sounded kind of confusing but you guys can see on the screen how it's working and it's really it goes together really well when I did it this way kind of like Legos except you had to build your own Legos. <laughs> I will say that I tried to stick really closely with my pencil markings on the dowel but either I mismeasured or something got off somewhere and so I decided to eyeball it and I just made sure that each next step was parallel with the previous step. And doing this process seemed to work really well even though eventually my pencil lines got off. So I just checked and rechecked and made sure everything looked well by eyeballing it and that seemed to work out. I'm using this turntable now because I'm going to be gluing the staircase onto the circle base because I do want this to stand up on its own. And the reason I'm using the turntable is because I'm going to have to have something support it while I add in some lower supports, but I want to be able to see it from all angles to make sure that my stairs are straight up and down, perpendicular with the ground. And so while I have my support, I want to be able to turn it without moving my support. So that's the whole purpose of having a turntable at this moment. Not necessary, but it made this part a little bit easier. This is a little mini tripod that I have and use occasionally. I just added a clip to the top to hold on to the dowel and then I turned it around while looking at the center pole trying to make sure that it was straight up and down. Eventually I do get a like a triangle, the same kind of triangle I use while I'm drafting things and this way I can lay it along the ground and check and make sure that the pole in the center is as straight up and down as possible before I add the supports because if I add the supports and it's crooked my stairway will always be crooked. 
The supports are actually going to be square dowels that I have. I can't actually go to the store right now, so I think the square ones will work okay. And I'm going to place those underneath my support pieces on the stairs, and I'm going to do this with every fourth stair tread. I think this will be enough to support the stairs, but it won't look too crazy and make it look like there's too much going on underneath the stairs. I still want them to have that magical hanging spiral staircase look. So I'm just cutting the dowels according to the length that I need and then I'm gluing them between the bottom of the stair support and the base. I don't worry about supporting the very top step because that step will be supported by the upper floor. So by doing every fourth stair, I end up having three supports. And now this thing can actually stand on its own, which is pretty cool because I don't have to attach it to my project yet. Now that this part is done, I can go ahead and paint it. I am going to do a base coat of black paint. I eventually want to make this look like metal, but when you're using metallic acrylics, you really need to have a base coat of paint. And depending on the type of metal look you want, that will depend on what kind of base coat color you want to use. So I want a really dark metal, so I'm going to use black if you want. Um, something really coppery, you're going to want to use brown, and you can kind of experiment with different base coats with metallic paints on top of it. I'm going to be using an antique gold and an antique copper paint, and the first layer is going to be the antique copper. I'm kind of dry brushing it. I'm going a little bit heavier than dry brushing, but I'm going to dry brush the antique copper on first, and it's okay with me if a little bit of that black continues to show through. I'm going to do this over the entire base and then with an even drier brush, I'm going to add the antique gold on top of that. The antique gold kind of adds a highlight to it and I think it just gives it a little bit more of a fun dimension to the metal than if it's just one singular metallic color. I also ended up painting the base black and I may do something else with that in the future, but for this tutorial in this video, I'm just leaving it a plain black. Now let's put the captain's quarters together so you can see how the staircase looks in place. This is the lower level and then we have the upper level and these two pieces are not connected yet, which is why I want the staircase to stand up on its own because I'm not quite ready to connect these two pieces together. Here's the staircase itself. Eventually I will glue the base to the floor, um, but like I said before, I'm not quite sure if I wanna leave it plain black or not. Y'all have to let me know in the comments what you think. And so far it works really well. It goes straight up to the upper floor. And I didn't think about it, but I do need a landing. I need a connection from the top step to the floor itself. So I decided to take these pieces that we cut off earlier from the top of the fan blade, and I'm gonna connect those to the top step. I also need to make some railings that will go around this opening so no one falls through the stair opening. I know some of you were worried about if the captain could reach his books from the staircase, so I got a 12 scale figure and we're just going to walk him down the steps with his arms up and it looks like he can reach the books really well. He may have to lean over a little bit, but I think he'll be good on being able to reach his books. And he's going to definitely have to duck his head, but I don't think that's rare on a ship. To create the landing, I'm taking these three pieces and what I want to do is create a frame to put the pieces on. The first thing I need to do is take the individual pieces and cut them straight. Previously we had cut these off and so they have the rounded edges that were basic, based off the rounded edges that were the stair treads. So I'm going to cut those straight. After that's done, I should have three pieces that are ready to be traced. I'm tracing this on another piece of thin basswood so that I know where my edges are going to be and I know where the edges are that I need to support. 
because I am creating this frame for these three pieces, I don't feel like I need to double them up like we did for the stair tread. After I have the frame drawn up on the piece of wood, I'm going to add my fan pieces back on because I want to make sure that they overlap and the frame will support all the edges. I'm going to cut out the center because I still want to be able to see through the design that's made by the fan. Using an X-Acto blade, I'm going to cut the wood pieces out and you will see that this doesn't work super well. Um, because basswood doesn't always behave. <laughs> and um, I did want to try and do this out of wood because the rest of the stair is done out of wood. But after this started cracking and breaking, I just um, threw a tiny fit and then I gave up and turned to my favorite, which is mat board. And if you're wondering why I'm using tacky glue here instead of wood glue, I have no idea. I probably just grabbed it out of normal reaction, but you can still continue to use wood glue at this point. I created the same frame that I would have made out of the wood piece, but I made it out of mat board, and then I glued every single side of my fan down onto my frame. It's at this point I also decided I wanted to support those inner pieces and so I cut two more skinny pieces of mat board to go underneath my fan pieces for extra support. After letting this dry a little bit, it was time to follow the same process that I've done on the rest of everything. I had to, of course, cover it in wood glue. I covered the front and the back of each piece of the fan and I do this to keep it from warping but I do feel like this piece warped more than any of the stairs did and I don't know if it's because it's connected with mat board and mat board is a different material than the wood fan itself but it I did feel like there was a little bit more warping. So once I was done with adding the wood glue I decided to weight down each of the sides so as it dried it was kind of constrained in how much it could warp if that makes sense. Once it was dry I went ahead and dry fit it to the top of the stairs and that's when I realized I definitely needed to remove the support. So I just took a pair of wire clippers and clipped through that uh, q-tip piece which wasn't hard because it's just made of paper. And then that kind of added a little shorter extra support to go underneath the landing piece. And this is how it will look. I'm following the same exact painting steps for this because I do want it to match and look as though it's one piece. So I'm adding the base layer of black paint. Before I add any of the metallics, I decided to go ahead and glue it to the very top step. That way any paints that I add can kind of be blended into that top step, like I said, to make sure it looks like it's all one piece. So I'm just adding some wood glue and I'm going to glue the very edge to that solid edge on the top step. And then make sure I add some clamps, letting that dry completely. And while my um, stairs are freestanding, I did find that the clamps weighted it down just a little bit. So I added my 321 blocks to the bottom so that it didn't fall over and get bent while it was trying to dry. It's also at this point that I cut off that center dowel so that it stuck up two and a half inches above the very top of the landing. I'm following my same exact painting techniques of adding the copper and a little bit of a heavy handed dry brush. And you can see in this step the difference between the top step, which has that extra little bit of the aged gold along with the copper. And um, I think the aged gold just gives it that extra little oomph that makes it an interesting, interesting thing to look at. And it just gives it a little bit more of a highlight. So I'm gonna add a lighter dry brush of the gold on top so it matches the rest of the spiral staircase. I do add a little bit of the metallic paint up the center dowel, but I do need to do a few more things to that center dowel so I don't worry about it too much at this point. Now that that's complete, we have all of our stairs and our landing 
done and I, th I think it looks like metal. You guys will have to let me know if you think it does too. I'm using some other little bit skinnier dowels. These are actually leftover pieces from a broken toy, which is why they're interesting colors, but um, I can't go to the craft store right now. So we're using what we have. But what's nice about this is they actually fit perfectly into these pony beads. And I'm going to use all these different pieces to create the railings that are going to go around the opening of the stair hole. These pony beads fit right on top and on bottom, which are going to create one of the railing pieces. I'm going to end up gluing these on, and then I'm going to use this round donut shaped bead to go on top because I want the railing itself to be made of rope. I also have this other pony bead. It doesn't fit quite as snug, but once I glue it on, I think it should look okay. And this bigger one is going to go on the center section of the stair itself. I'm using wood glue for this again, just adding a little bit of glue and then popping the pony bead on so that it has time to take hold. I'm also going to add a foot to each one of these railing pieces so it looks like there's a place where the builders of this ship could have screwed the railing to the ship floor itself. So I'm taking two ends of the craft stick. Again, I can save the center of it for another project later on, but it is going to be glued the flat sides together and then on the bottom of my railing piece. So like I said, it looks like it has a foot where someone could put a screw through so it attached to the floor. I'm using a same donut bead idea for the center of the stairs. And to attach this, I am using some tacky glue and I'm putting the tacky glue on the beaded part and then I'm putting super glue on the donut bead part because tacky glue plus super glue tend to grab really quickly and this is convenient because then I don't have to hold the donut bead. And this is going to create this little hole area where eventually I can snake some string through to make it look like a rope banister. I'm doing the same exact thing for each individual pole that's going to go around the opening. And then like every single thing we've done in this project, I'm going to coat the entire thing in wood glue, the pony bead. And I'm only actually going through the center of the donut bead because once it dries, it should hold everything. But I kind of liked the detail on the bead, so I didn't want to lose it. Once it's dry, it looks like this and the poles look like this. You can barely see the wood glue anymore, but it is on there and it gives it that same metallic smooth texture that the stairs have. And if you do get some glue bumps, you can just sand them down flat. I did find that the donut beads at the top of the poles were really convenient while I was working on them because I could string them onto a paper clip and they would just hang there and dry and I didn't have to worry about them falling over. So then I just added the metallic paints and my railing poles were complete and ready to be put into the project. I think if you wanted to add a railing up the stairs, you could also use the same thing. You would just glue them to the stair pieces themselves. Here's how it looks within the hole. And then the poles themselves would go around the outside, although I'm not gluing them on quite yet. I think they will look nice and I don't think they will block the bookshelf view too much. Before I install anything permanently, I want to make sure we do one more book opening where I can put my hand up through the spiral staircase hole. So let's do that now. Our first book is made by Brooke L. from Missouri. She made this lovely journal with gold detailings and a rhinestone on the front. And she had said she imagined it was maybe from another captain or possibly from some kind of royal, like a king, that possibly the captain had picked up along his way and in his journeys. These next four books are made by Bonnie B. from British Columbia. 
They're all amazingly vintage and I love that she added a Jane Austen in there. I love Jane Austen. They open and are fully illustrated with writing inside, which is really fun. She also included a book of maps with maps inside and also a really cool photo album and she sent me a sheet of extra photos to go along with it. She said this is the first time she's ever sent her minis to anybody, so I feel very honored to have these. The next book is by Debbie W. from Colorado, and the front of this book reads Cinders and Smoke Steam Engines of Early Colorado, which I love because she mentioned that it might tickle the fancy of a captain who loves traveling, and I think she's definitely right. The next two books are by Anna N. from Slovakia, and they are both atlases. The first atlas opens and has papers from Thicket Works inside, and the second one is similar to it, but just a little bit smaller, so it might be easier for the captain to take along with him on his trips. This next book was created by Janet W. from Texas and it has a lovely inscription on the back made for the captain's quarters and it says Texas time travel on the front and I do think it would be awesome to time travel through Texas history so I love it. Next we have four books made by Marilyn H. of Louisiana and all of them have a lovely vintage cover. I really like the one that looks like it has a heart on the front. I don't know why it reminds me a lot of Legend of Zelda, which is one of my favorite adventure games. This final book was made by Catherine K. of Mississippi, and it is the Book of Kells. She is of Irish descent, and so she wanted to send me one of their national treasures in miniature form. It was really interesting to learn about this book's real life counterpart, and I think it'll make a beautiful treasure on the captain's shelves. Thank you so much to everybody who sent in a book. I am just always overwhelmed and I think the captain's shelves are looking just stunning with all these individual books. If you still want to send in a book, there's still plenty of time and I will put a link to the video that gives you all the information in the description box below. So before I end this video, I wanted to give you guys a general idea of what I want to do for the banister that goes along with the poles. I'm going to be using yarn or some kind of thick rope to go inside the donut beads. This is just an example, but when I do this for real, I will probably coat it in some glue so that when the yarn hangs in between each post, it'll hang down like it looks like it has some real gravity and it will just look like a thick rope that's going from pole to pole, which creates this banister that goes around the hole. I won't put it on the side with the books, but it'll just be along the opening side near to the wall with the door in it. So I know this doesn't look really nice right now. I'll probably age the rope. It'll have glue so that it stays in place, but I just wanted to give you an idea. And um, if you do have any ideas, opposite or different from what I'm doing. I'd love to hear about that as well. Thank you for watching this. If you like this video, please leave me a like. Feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications with the little bell and make sure you mark all notifications. I think that's what you're supposed to do. And that'll tell you anytime my video goes up or anytime I do a live stream and that helps me out a lot. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Aira and I'm going to take the wash your one, two, three blocks challenge. And this is for anyone who's had one, two, three blocks since Christmas and has been too lazy to wash them. Oh, it's just me? Oh, here we go.